All right, here we are, uh, Numbers to Deuteronomy for Beginners, a new series that we're starting uh, today. Uh, subtitle of the series, Faithfulness in the Face of Challenge. This is the first lesson uh, and it'll be the uh, introductory remarks uh, concerning these two, uh, these two Bible books. Now, before we begin, I, I just want to remind you that this will not be a line by line study of these two books, but rather a summary of their content and lessons that we can learn from these two Old Testament books. Now, as we uh, have done in the past, I will assign you chapters to read in advance so that we can review the meaning and the context of the material in class. In this way, uh, we'll be able to complete our study of both books in the 10 class sessions uh, listed in our outline uh, of the course itself. You have to remember uh, Numbers has uh, 36 chapters, Deuteronomy has 34 chapters, that's 70 chapters. Uh, if we were to read line by line, it would take a lot more than 10 lessons to cover. So you do the reading in advance and I'll uh, fill in the blanks, uh, if you will, during class time. So let's begin our review of these two books. Uh, first of all, the background, the authorship, and the historical context of the Book of Numbers. We're gonna start with that book. Uh, the Book of Numbers, the fourth book of the uh, Hebrew Bible in the Christian Old Testament, chronicles the Israelites' wanderings in the wilderness on their journey from Mount Sinai to the promised land of Canaan. Its name originates from two censuses of the Israelites recorded in the text, but its Hebrew uh, title, In the Wilderness, more accurately captures its content. The book itself details the laws, the rituals, and the experiences of the Israelites, including their trials, uh, the rebellions that took place, and God's provision and his guidance of his people throughout their journey. As far as uh, authorship uh, is concerned, uh, both Jewish and Christian scholars uh, attribute the authorship of uh, Numbers uh, to Moses. This is based on uh, passages within the Pentateuch. Uh, Pentateuch refers to the first five books of the Bible. Uh, passages in the Pentateuch that suggest that Moses wrote down the laws and the events that were described. And you can read about that in Exodus 17, verse 14, Exodus 24, verse four, and also in Numbers 33, verse two. And of course, that's internal evidence uh, for the uh, authorship of uh, Moses. As far as uh, historical context is a concern, Numbers is seen as a historical document that provides a detailed account of the Israelites' experiences in the wilderness, including their travels, the battles that they fought, the rebellions that took place, and of course, the miraculous provisions of God. Now, in addition to this, uh, importantly, it also includes two censuses, laws, and of course, instructions for worship and community life. These things reflecting God's covenantal relationship with Israel and of course his requirements for them as his chosen people. Now the events in the book of Numbers are believed to have occurred in the late Bronze Age, roughly around the 13th century uh, BC. This period is seen as a time when the Israelites having been freed from uh, slavery in Egypt under the leadership of Moses, wandered in the wilderness for 40 years before entering the promised land. Okay, so much for uh, the book of Numbers. Let's do the same exercise this time for the book of uh, Deuteronomy. As far as background is concerned, Deuteronomy, the fifth and final book of the Pentateuch, serves as a series of farewell speeches delivered by Moses to the Israelites while they were on the plains of Moab just before they enter into the promised land. It uh, revisits the laws given to the Israelites it emphasizes uh, fidelity to God and the covenant, and it includes Moses' blessings uh, to the tribes. Uh, in addition to that, his warnings about disobedience and of course, predictions of Israel's future. The uh, book is characterized by its style of uh, exhortation, uh, urging the Israelites to choose life and blessing by adhering to God's command. If they obey, God will bless them. If they disobey, God will uh, punishment. 
uh, will punish them rather. A uh, little bit about the authorship. Traditionally, Moses is credited with the authorship of Deuteronomy. This view is supported by numerous passages within the text where Moses is said to be speaking to the people himself. The name Deuteronomy comes from the Greek translation of the Hebrew Bible known as the Septuagint. The term itself derives from the Greek words deuteros, meaning second, and nomos, meaning law. Thus, Deuteronomy can be understood to mean the second law or the repetition of the law. This title reflects the book's content, which includes a uh, restatement and explanation of the laws given to the Israelites in earlier books of the Pentateuch, particularly as the Israelites are preparing to enter the promised land. So they're poised to enter the promised land. And in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses is reviewing the things that he's taught them over the 40 years that they have uh, been in the, uh, in the wilderness. The uh, Hebrew title for the fifth book of the Pentateuch is Devarim, which translates to words uh, or things uh, in, uh, in English. This title is derived from the opening phrase of the book in Hebrew, Ele Ha Devarim, meaning these are the words. And it refers to the speeches or the words that Moses spoke to the Israelites in the plains of Moab, as I mentioned before, before they entered into the promised land to begin uh, resettling uh, that uh, area. As far as uh, historical uh, setting is concerned, the setting for the speeches in the book of Deuteronomy is the end of the Israelites' 40 year journey through the wilderness as they stand ready to cross the Jordan River into the land of Canaan. Now I'd like to uh, share with you some of the similarities and some of the differences between uh, the book of Numbers and the book of De uh, Deuteronomy. Let's begin with uh, some of the uh, similarities. First of all, uh, one of the things that is similar uh, between these two books is the idea of law and covenant. They both talk about the law given by God and the covenant established between God and uh, the people or the uh, Israelites. Uh, both books place a strong emphasis on the laws given by God and the covenant between God and the Israelites. The book of Numbers continues the legal exposition from Exodus and Leviticus, including instructions on ritual purity, the priesthood, uh, community regulations, while Deuteronomy, the, the other book, uh, reiterates and expands upon these laws, emphasizing their observance as the basis for Israel's relationship uh, with, uh, with God. In both books, Adherence to the law is portrayed as essential for blessing and success in the land that God is giving to Israel. So, you know, Moses has, from God, has been giving the Israelites a series of uh, laws and commands and uh, prohibitions and so on and so forth. And in Deuteronomy, he reviews all of these, but he emphasizes how important it is to maintain these things, to obey these things in order to remain in the covenant relationship with God. Then uh, another similarity between both books uh, is the wilderness experience that it describes or that they describe. Uh, number in, numbers in Deuteronomy share a, a narrative setting centered around Israel's experiences in the wilderness. Numbers details the journey and the challenges faced by the Israelites as they traveled from Mount Sinai towards the promised land. And it includes their complaints, their rebellions, and of course, God's punishments, as well as his provisions for his people. Deuteronomy, while primarily a series of speeches by Moses, reflects on these wilderness experiences, using them as a backdrop for urging obedience to God's laws. Both books underscore the formative nature of the wilderness period for shaping Israel's identity and its faith. All right, so much for uh, similarities. We also have some differences between the two books. One difference is narrative focus and structure. Here's what I mean by that. Numbers presents a mix of narrative history, law, and census lists 
chronicling the Israelites' journey through the wilderness in a relatively chronological manner. So as you read Numbers, you get the feeling that, the, uh, that Moses is saying, we were here, we did this, and then we moved to there, and then this happened, and then we moved over here, and then this happened. You know, a chronological narrative, that's what Numbers uh, is, uh, is like. It includes various accounts of rebellion, uh, divine punishment, and the logistics of travel and camp arrangements. Deuteronomy, on the other hand, is structured around Moses' speeches, and it focuses on more legal exhortation and theological discourse, while it revisits historical events narrated in Numbers and other books of the Pentateuch, its primary aim is to exhort and prepare the new generation of Israelites for life in the promised land. Uh, another uh, difference is the uh, uh, perspective on authority and historical context. Again, what I mean by that is this. Numbers is written from a perspective that combines immediate narrative with retrospective law giving, often switching between the third person accounts of historical events and then direct legal instruction. Its composition reflects various layers of tradition and editing. Deuteronomy is presented from Moses' point of view, giving it a, a more unified voice, and it addresses an audience standing on the brink of entering Canaan, whereas the book of Numbers is talking to and about people that are still wandering in the uh, wilderness. In the end, both books are written by Moses and they are addressed to the Jews while they are in the wilderness. The main difference is that Numbers continues to list the laws and commands of God, the list of people who made the journey and the list of things that the Jews did on their journey both good and bad. Deuteronomy, on the other hand, refers to these topics, but as speeches by Moses, as he prepares the people to enter the promised land. Okay, let's have a little overview of the wilderness journey that the people took. The journey of the Israelites through the wilderness, as detailed in the books of Numbers and Deuteronomy, uh, represents a, a pivotal era in the history of the uh, Jewish nation. This period encompasses the transition from the miraculous exodus from Egypt to the brink of entering the promised land of Canaan. This all takes place over uh, approximately 40 years. This journey shaped the identity and the faith of the Israelite nation through various trials, divine interventions, and the giving and reinforcing of the law. The following is a brief overview combining elements from both books, giving us uh, elements in the uh, account of their journey and wandering. Sometimes we, we get a little confused with the strange names that are used and, and you know, we're not sure where they are exactly and when something happened. So a, a little chronological order here of some of the main events. The first event described by the, these books is the departure uh, from Sinai. After receiving the law, including the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai, the Israelites prepare to journey towards Canaan. Numbers begins with a census of the people and details regarding the organization of the tribes around the tabernacle, their central place of worship. The cloud of the Lord that guided their movements is also described. And uh, we're given information about how the cloud signaled uh, to the people when they should set out and move or when they should stop and uh, uh, encamp in a particular place. We also have uh, rebellion and punishment. The journey was marked uh, by repeated instances of rebellion and lack of faith among the Israelites including complaints about hardships, longing for Egypt, challenges to Moses' leadership, and the refusal to enter Canaan after the negative report of the uh, spies. These acts of disobedience led to divine punishment. The divine punishment included the decree that the adult generation who left Egypt would not enter the promised land, uh, destined instead to wander until they died while still in the wilderness. And we know, of course, after reading the books, that this took approximately 
40 years. Uh, next uh, element, journeying and encounters. Throughout their wanderings, the Israelites encountered various peoples and territories. Some of these encounters included conflicts, such as with the king of Arad and the Moabite king, ba uh, Balak's attempt to uh, curse the Israelites through the prophet Balaam. Despite the adversities, however, they also experienced divine provisions, such as water flowing from a rock and the miraculous defeat of many of their uh, enemies. We also have laws and covenant renewal. In addition to the narrative of the travel and the conflict they incurred, Numbers and Deuteronomy contain significant legal uh, material concerning God's covenant with them. Numbers deals with laws concerning purity, Levitical duties, and offerings, among uh, other things. Deuteronomy, largely composed of Moses' farewell speeches, reiterates and expands upon the law. It emphasizes the importance of obedience to God's commandments as the condition for blessings uh, when they enter the land of Canaan. Another element, uh, preparation to enter the land. Deuteronomy focuses on the preparation of the new generation of Israelites to enter the promised land and succeed in settling it. Moses, not permitted, not permitted rather to enter himself, uh, reaffirms the covenant that God made uh, with the people. He also refused the, uh, the laws and he encourages the people to remain faithful to God. He appoints Joshua as his successor and he also delivers blessings to each of the, uh, each of the tribes. Another element in, this, uh, in these two books, the covenant renewed. Moses' speeches in the book of Deuteronomy emphasizes the renewal of the covenant between God and Israel. Uh, in these speeches, he recalls the journey from Egypt, the giving of the law, and the lessons learned during their wanderings. The people are urged to choose life and blessing by loving the Lord, obeying his commandments, and also teaching these commandments to their children if they wish to continue uh, the blessings received uh, uh, from the Lord. And then we have the uh, conclusion to the wilderness journey. The wilderness period ends with the Israelites camped on the plains of Moab across the Jordan River from the city of Jericho. Moses' death is recorded in the final chapter of Deuteronomy, marking the end of an important era. The Israelites stand ready to enter the promised land, carrying the laws and the covenantal promises given to them in the wilderness. And so this journey with its trials, revelations and teachings was foundational for the Israelite identity, emphasizing faith in God, obedience to his commandments, and the centrality of the covenant in their relationship with him. Um, next section I want to do is uh, the key themes. There are themes in both uh, books, key and important themes in both of these uh, uh, books. Uh, they're uh, rich uh, with themes that are central, not only to the texts, but to the entire narrative arc of the Bible itself. Uh, however, there are four uh, key themes that emerge prominently within both books, uh, and these are uh, obedience, faith, leadership, and covenant. So here's a, a brief summary of each of these themes as they are found in these uh, books, the first of which is obedience. Obedience is a, a central theme in both uh, Numbers and Deuteronomy, often portrayed as a fundamental requirement for the Israelites to maintain their relationship with God and to ensure survival and success. If they obey, God will see them through every trial and every uh, challenge uh, of their journey. If they disobey, then of course the opposite will take place. So in the book of Numbers, the consequences of disobedience are vividly illustrated through various rebellions against God and Moses, resulting in severe punishments including the wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Deuteronomy reiterates the importance of obedience with Moses urging the Israelites to adhere faithfully to God's commandments 
as they prepare to enter the promised land. And so obedience is linked to blessings while disobedience leads to curses and uh, adversities. Um, another theme, uh, faith that we'd mentioned before, faith or the lack thereof is a recurring theme that underpins the Israelites' experiences in the wilderness. In Numbers, the lack of faith is starkly demonstrated in the incident of the spies, where the Israelites' fear and refusal to trust in God's promise lead to their uh, prolonged wandering uh, in the desert. Conversely, instances of faith, such as Caleb and Joshua's trust in God's protection, are highlighted and they are commended. Deuteronomy often reflects on these experiences to reinforce the necessity of faith in God, emphasizing trust and reliance on Him as the key to overcoming all the obstacles uh, in inheriting uh, the promised land. Going into the promised land wasn't just uh, moving in, they had to conquer the nations that were in the land, they had to settle the land. And the promise was if you obey God, if you keep His commandments, he will go before you. He will uh, guarantee that you will uh, win these battles. And so that's the theme of faith. Another theme is the one of leadership. Leadership is explored through, of course, the figures of Moses and Aaron, and of course, later on, Joshua and, and other leaders, providing insights into the challenges and the responsibilities of leading a nation under God's guidance. Numbers presents Moses and Aaron's leadership amidst rebellion, intercession for the people, and of course, personal failures. The transition of leadership from Moses to Joshua is uh, recounted in the book of Deuteronomy, and it underscores the importance of godly leadership and the continuity of God's promises and plans for Israel. Uh, both books highlight the role of leaders in guiding, teaching and interceding for God's people according to his will. And then the fourth uh, general theme is the idea of the covenant. The covenant between God and the Israelites is a foundational theme uh, that binds the narrative and the laws together in both of the books. Numbers demonstrates the covenant in action, detailing how adherence to the covenant laws affects the Israelites and their journey and their relationship with God. Deuteronomy, often referred to as the book of the covenant, places significant emphasis on renewing, remembering, and adhering to the covenant. Moses' speeches remind the Israelites of their covenant obligations and the blessings of faithfulness, setting the stage for their life in the promised land under the terms of the covenant, always under the terms of the covenant. Together, these themes of obedience, faith, leadership, and covenant weave a complex narrative that reflects the Israelites' relationship with God, their struggles and successes, and the foundational principles that will guide them uh, into, the, uh, into the future. And so we arrive at the point of the lesson, uh, hopefully we'll have in each of our lessons, uh, and this would be lessons, things you know, that, that pertain to us today. What can we get from these books that we can apply uh, today? Uh, the key themes of obedience, faith, leadership, and covenant in the books of Numbers and Deuteronomy provide timeless lessons that remain relevant for us today as uh, believers. And so here are three lessons that can be drawn from these themes. First, the importance of trust and obedience in our relationship with God. The narratives and laws in Numbers and Deuteronomy underscore the crucial role of obedience to God's commands as an expression of trust and faith in Him. If we want to show God that we believe in Him, the way that we show that is by trusting Him and obeying Him. And so for today's believers, this emphasizes the importance of living in accordance with God's will as it is revealed in the scriptures. It's a reminder that obedience is not merely about following rules, but is rooted in a trusting relationship with God, recognizing His wisdom, His sovereignty, and His love. We obey Him 
because of his sovereignty, because of his wisdom, his power and, and, and love. He is worthy of our obedience. This obedience born out of our faith is fundamental to experiencing God's guidance and blessings in one's life. It's not any different today than it was then. Back then, if you obeyed, God would bless you. Well, today, if you obey, God blesses you. And then a second lesson is the value of godly leadership and fellowship, how important godly leadership is. The stories of Moses and Joshua and Caleb and others highlight the significance of godly leadership and the impact it has on the body's direction and the body's faithfulness. For believers today, this underscores the need to both be and support leaders who are committed to, the, to following God's guidance. Leaders who intercede for the members of their congregations. Leaders who are able to encourage others in their faith journey. Again, nothing different. We need good leadership in the church today. Additionally, it speaks to the importance of being part of a congregation that nurtures growth and accountability and mutual support in walking with God. Yes, of course, we need good leadership in the church. As I've said before, a church cannot grow beyond the maturity of its own leaders. And then finally, the centrality of our covenant relationship with God. You know, when we, when we say covenant, a lot of times people uh, think immediately of the Israelites. Oh yes, the covenant uh, you know, that the Israelites have. But we have a covenant with God. You know, the new covenant, the New Testament, we have a covenant with God. And so a third lesson here is how central our covenant relationship with God is in this life. The covenant theme that runs through Numbers in Deuteronomy reminds us of the deep and binding relationship between God and His people, marked by His promises, obligations, and mutual fidelity. We are faithful to Him, He is faithful to us. And so for believers today, this reinforces the idea that faith is not just about individual belief, but it involves a covenant relationship with both God and his church body, the, ch uh, the church. It calls believers to remember God's faithfulness and promises to live out the covenant in daily life through love and service and obedience and to pass on these covenantal truths to future generations. You know, we're always one generation away from apostasy. We have to teach our children about the relationship we have with God, about the covenant uh, that we have with God. We pass on our relationship with God through the proclamation of the gospel. We're obligated to teach the future generation how to maintain their covenant with God through the knowledge of his word and through obedience. Nothing has changed. It's the same as it was you know, 3,000 years ago. They maintained the covenant by knowing God's word, knowing his laws and obeying him. Today, we maintain the covenant with God. How? By knowing his word and obeying him through you know, our obedience and our acts of faith. And so these lessons from Numbers and Deuteronomy invite us to reflect on our relationship with God and of course the importance of the church and church leadership today as we follow our spiritual journey with Christ. And so each generation will have their own wilderness journey to undertake and we have to prepare them for that by teaching and modeling faithfulness, holiness and love of God, obedience to his word and how to love one another in the church since this is how all men will know that we are truly disciples of Jesus Christ and that we are truly keeping the covenant we have with our God. Uh, and that passage, by the way, uh, is in John chapter 13, verse 35. Well, okay, here uh, we have a, a brief introduction to both of these books, give us a little bit of the lay of the land, how we're going to study them. Uh, here's the assignment, I want you to read uh, chapters one to four in the book of Numbers. Remember, I said at the beginning, we're not going to be reading uh, all of these uh, passages uh, for both of these books in our class. So you do the reading before the class. So next week, 
we're going to actually get into the text itself of Numbers uh, and we're going to cover chapters one to four. We're not going to read chapters one to four. Uh, I, I let you do that at home on your own. When you come to class, you'll be ready. You will have uh, you know, read the chapters in advance. And of course, you'll know therefore what I'm talking about when I'm making certain references uh, to events taking place in chapters one to four. Okay, that's it for the first class. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye-bye.